So this is the X-Pro Tahiti 150. I'll give you a little walk around and then some of my opinions. This is the low beam. High beam. So you do get an indicator with the high beam. Both the bulbs are H1 style. Turn signal, left, right, we'll leave that one on. You have two buttons. First to cancel you hit this center button and it will cancel your blinker you have two buttons right here just switches between odometer and trip you would hold this to reset there is a clock Under the seat, it comes with a tool kit, which I have opened right here. You get an Allen, two wrenches, a reversible Phillips or flathead screwdriver, and your plug wrench. 1.3 gallons of fuel. You will not fit a helmet in this compartment. It is rather small. You would be able to fit a helmet about the size of a standard bicycle helmet in here for comparison. The material covering this seat is waterproof. I have verified that. So in the morning if I come out and it's been raining, I just take a microfiber cloth, wipe this down and when I get to work, my butt is not wet. That was a big mystery for me since all the scooters I've had have either sucked and would get your butt wet 100% for days afterwards, or it was amazing. And this one, I'm glad to say is amazing. I don't have a, a wet butt when I get to work. 
these little foot pegs you push them in they'll come out they're hard to get to go back in it takes a real delicate barely push on it until you 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 just you're gonna hear the click i mean feel it you're not really gonna hear it. you're gonna feel like a little click and don't go any farther and just stop right there and it will stay that's all i can say is it, it takes a a little practice to get it to stay in this pocket is pretty deep and it does have a drain it will not fill up with water So a little about this scooter, it's made by a company called Senling out of China. They make all sorts of scooters, but they're famous for their electric scooter that is really popular in China. X-Pro is just an importer. All they do is buy these in bulk, have a graphic made, which I removed, the X-Pro sticker, I removed that. Um, they just throw a sticker on it and sell it. They're just an importer. The scooter will do... I haven't gotten it up to 60. I've gotten it to 58. But it feels most comfortable cruising around, you know, 50, 52, 54 miles an hour around that. But it will do 58 miles an hour. I can confirm that. So down here, with our disc brake, we have a dual piston caliper. And this is the sense ring for our speedometer sensor, which is the style where it counts these little rings as it goes by. Instead of being this, the old school gear style that, that tend to corrode out and break. So I was happy that this actually, you know, works. I have tested the speedometer with my GPS on my phone and it is dead on. So indicated on my phone was 40 miles an hour and it was dead on 40 miles an hour on the speedometer, even down low, 15 miles an hour on the phone, 15 miles an hour on the actual scooter. Rear brake is a cable style has a beefy cable down here this is how you adjust it you can actually do this by hand you just take this and you turn it turn it in for taking slack out or go the other direction if you want to add more slack what i mean by slack is how far you have to pull this before it starts engaging this is hydraulic and the front brakes work amazing Back brakes are what you would expect from drum. This powder coated handlebar system is actually, I like it, looks pretty sharp. Luggage rack is real, real secure. It has little tie down spots right here and then right here in the front. So you could put something on here what I would picture doing is, it, let's say you have a backpack that you're already wearing one, your back luggage container's full, you can put like a, a large backpack on here and then get bungee straps and hold it down. Back here, this is all metal. The mount and handle grips, these are all metal right here. You can mount your top box right there. The only thing I had to do when I've got this was adjust the idle. It literally rolled off the crate and started right up. To adjust the idle, you're gonna wanna open this little compartment right here. And right there, this screw right here. If you go in it's going to de it's going to increase your idle speed and if you go out it's going to decrease also while you're in here one at a time remove these these nuts and put loctite on it 
and then torque them back down. I did that with every single nut that I could find. Just one at a time, don't remove more than one. Remove it, put Loctite, and then torque it back down. You'll thank yourself, you know, a month from now, normally when all these screws start to loosen up. It does have a running light right here. If you take your key out and you push this red button, it will cover up the keyhole. On your key, there's a magnet right there. It's this whole thing, this whole assembly right here is, is metal or aluminum so to unlock that have the key pointing towards you and you're gonna go in just like that boom it's hard to do on camera let's do it one more time boom Whoop. there we go These mirrors, I feel like they're a little narrow. Like I wish that instead of being right here, like they were just a little bit farther out. I find myself looking at my shoulder. One other gripe is the way this seat is. It has this bump right here. So it forces you to sit forward. And I, for me, I weigh 225. It, it, it feels like I'm a little too close to the handlebars. I did get used to it. After about a week of riding it, compared to my old, I had a Lance Cabo 125, and that's a smaller displacement, but really roomy, roomy as hell scooter. How does this compare to the $4,000 Lance Cabo? Speed-wise, they're right on par with each other. The Lance Cabo might have been a little snappier off the line. And the Lance Cabo would also do 65 miles an hour with me on it. This one, it doesn't get up to 60. At least I haven't had it up to 60 yet. But as you can see, I only have 46 miles on it total 40 46.3 it came delivered to me with zero miles so when i turned it on it said zero miles on it Ten w 40 oil is what they recommend one thing you're going to want to do when you first roll this thing off the crate is check your oil check it i'll show you where that is that is right here boom so it's not the easiest to get to I had to go up and under with my hand like this and then pop it open clean it off screw it all the way back in then remove it one more time and look it should be at least halfway through like there's a little you'll see a little like checker checker mark pattern and it should be halfway between the top and the bottom of that checker board, checker mark pattern what I did was start it up, I let it warm up before I even rode it anywhere. After I put fuel in it, of course. I let I set, let it idle. I let it idle five minutes. And then I rode it around my, my neighborhood for about 10 minutes, not very long. And I brought it back and I immediately did my first oil change. I used Motul 10W40. the um fully synthetic uh there's a motorcycle dealership near my house that sells it rather cheap so that's what i go with 
you can go with I, I recommend fully synthetic the mineral oil blends they they tend to work really well um, Yeah, thanks for watching. I will keep you updated. If I have any issues, look for a pinned comment down below.